Matt Aguilar here, and welcome to Comic Book Tabletop. So for today's episode, we're gonna dive into IDW Games' brand new title, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Changes Constant. Uh, it's a brand new co-op game, but it is also competitive as well, and it's designed by Daniel Lansdowne and Pete Walsh. So, what you can notice on the board, which looks pretty spiffy, right? And by the way, I wore purple for my favorite turtle, Donatello, yeah, buddy. Uh, so what makes this game cool is that all the turtles work together as a team. So you'll notice, and we'll actually go to this shot here, you can see the dice. Each turtle is gonna have their own color dice, matching their color, and they're all gonna have different symbols on them. Those dictate what you can do during your turn. You're also gonna wanna talk to your other players to figure out the best strategy to help them succeed as well as yours because they can use part of your symbols. So you're gonna wanna work together. Uh, and then of course, we've got a bunch of different minis on the board as they straight up uh, moving across the map. You're gonna try and take them out before whatever the adventure dictates. So uh, all of these are really cool actually in the fact that they have you can see there, they have like full on comic stories in between and they tell you exactly where to put everybody and it's all part of a long campaign. There's actually a bunch of stuff to go through. Uh, so with that, we're actually gonna go ahead and get started uh, with our buddy Jamie, who is also a huge Turtles fan. So we're gonna get him in here and play through a round. So stick around. And we're back to actually play around. And my good buddy Jamie Lovett is here. What's up, buddy? Hello. Uh, real quick before we get into this, favorite turtle? Uh, Leonardo. Wrong answer, because it should have been Donatello. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and roll into this. Uh, one of the things we talked about before, the coolest parts of this is the dice and how you essentially work together as a team. So, we're gonna roll our each character's dice and kind of work together to figure out what the best thing is. So, get to rolling. Put that there. So, one of the coolest parts is, and you can probably see it uh, on this die right there. So, you can see there's a cheese symbol right here. Uh, that is actually going to let you in later on in the game. It's the first turn, so it doesn't really do a ton other than letting you pick whatever symbol you want. Uh, but in the later rounds, it'll actually let you heal and you can actually gain a focus back, which focus lets you reroll dice, which is crucial. So I am going to pick the movement there for me. Oh, what money? I got so much movement. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. I use You're not my animated Jamie when you roll dice as I am. This this well, says Well, I'm a trying lot. to make sure it doesn't go everywhere. <laughs> I use my chi to get some movement as well. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Because trains. Yes. So uh, one of the things you can actually see on the board is there's yellow lines, there's red lines, and there's blue lines. Those are different elevations. Some slow you down. Others, like the trains, mean you have to climb. So to climb, you're going to need so much movement to do that. Now, uh, we've got our stuff laid out here. Um, do you need extra movement for Leonardo? Because I have some movement here. Would you like some? I'm a giver. Uh, yeah, sure, let's do that. Right. So I'll give you some of that. Uh, also, what's great is that his Raphael, he's on the other end of the board, but I actually get a benefit uh, from his. So I will get some movement there as well. Oh, all right, I think we're good. Uh, so the thing about co-op mode is that you're gonna see on the cards, there's these little symbols here. They will, they're essentially AI. So you have a series of steps that you'll follow with them. You'll move them closest to you to hurt you uh, and they'll attack with whatever stats they have here. So you don't actually have to roll a bunch of dice for the villains. Uh, the battle dice though are what we roll for the heroes. And so those you'll see there, uh, your stats on your cards and everything will dictate uh, how much you can roll. Uh, each turtle is different. I know Raphael has a higher attack than a lot of the other turtles. Donatello has a higher defense. So that's what you'll use for that. So this is the initiative deck and essentially this will dictate who goes. So we're gonna pull this as a shuffled and random. So the first one up is the foot ninja. So they will all move as a unit. So when you draw their card and we'll go through ours. Uh, so they will all move. They can move, I uh, believe. Let's see where theirs is. What's their movement? Three? Three. So they're gonna move closest to a turtle. So one, two, that's about as far as he can go. He's gonna go one, two. And then this guy is going to go one. And he can't go down. Oh no, he can. That's right. All right, and then this guy is gonna go one, and he can't go down any further because he is on top of a train. So that is the foot ninja. If they were close to us, they would attack us, but in this case, they're not to us yet. So, next up, Thug Brawlers. Brawler, shot collar, 20 inch play, no? Okay. <laughs> that was not that was dignified. Awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, one, two, and they can move three. So he can't move anymore because that would give him an extra move. Uh, and then we're gonna move this guy. One, two, three. 
And then the last brawler. I swear there's another one. There he goes. One, two, three. All right. So he's done. Next. Oh, it's your favorite. Ooh. Alapex. So one of the cool things about her is that because she is the villain of this campaign, essentially to win this, we have to beat her. That's all we have to do. We could ignore everybody else and beat her. But she's a pain, and you essentially, to attack her, you get to roll one of the battle die, uh, and essentially, if it comes up as a defense, uh, she gets to just ignore all the damage you had, which sucks. <laughs> it royally sucks. Uh, so let's go ahead and move her. She can move twice. What is her movement? Four? Four. One, two, three, four. And then she can move again. So one, two. Three, no, nope, she's gonna move there. All right, so she's done. And this is the tutorial mission, so you're gonna get a lot of like people moving, <laughs> not necessarily attacking. Raphael is next. Jamie, that is you. What would you like to do? Uh, well, I guess I ought to move. Uh, and I have two move because I'm borrowing some of yours, right? Uh, so here's Raphael. <laughs> His movement is three, and it costs two to move through here, right? Yes. When so you I cross can... a yellow line, it's, it's an extra. So this will be one, two, three, and then I can move again. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I should move one, and I assume I can't cross there since it's train meets yeah. wall. But if I have two move left, can I climb or does that Yeah, as long as you have two move left, you can Let's climb. Let's do that. Let's get up on the train. Boo, yeah. And this goes away. Okay. I've used it. And I can't attack anybody, so. Well, that was an eventful turn. Also, right? we should uh, look at each one of us, and you can see here below the cards, have these special ability cards. They let you do things, you have to have the right symbols to match them, but you can do things from throwing your uh, fellow turtle, and I'll go ahead and put one of these here. So you can see, uh, Mikey's is double chuck. He essentially gets like bonus to attack and things like that. Uh, Donatella has one of the coolest ones actually in the fact that if you're facing the Mausers, uh, he has like, it's does machines just like the theme song and he gets like a ridiculous bonus that he can just like hit all <laughs> kinds of damage on. Uh, so yeah, so let's go ahead and pull the next card. It's my boy. <laughs> Glad you're happy. <laughs> I'm not biased at all, by the way. Um, okay, so I've got move here. I've got a move there as well from you. Uh, and let's go ahead and move. So my first one will be, I can move three. One, two, three. And then I can move again. Uh, one, two. So we're going to climb there, which means I can go ahead and attack. Now, for attack, the way this works. So I have two katanas. And you can see that one actually lets me defend as well and attack, uh, but I've got two of these. So essentially those add dice to my attack. So my core attack is one, which means I will take one black die. And then I've got two of those, which means I will take two of those. So I will roll a total of three. Um, and I will attack this dude, Foot Ninja. By the way, best part of almost any game is rolling dice. <laughs> Let's just put that out there. Wow, that was a giant whiff. So I got one hit, and to defend, which would only mean his defense is, I believe, foot soldier's defense is two? Yes, Correct. so that wouldn't do anything. However, I have this little handy dandy thing, which is a focus token. Uh, each turtle has a certain number of those. You can gain them back throughout the game. If I go ahead and turn one of those in, which I will, then that means I can reroll as many dice as I want, hopefully getting a better result. Oh, booyah, the sun! Ooh. Look at that, okay. So, I got now that which is five that beats his two. So I would just take two away, which means I do three damage. He only has- Two health. Two health, so he gone. That's right, he is done. Donatello is the one who drew first blood. Look at that, Harry, we'll call him. Harry is dead. Harry the ninja? <laughs> Harry the ninja is dead. We'll just set him there. All so right. next up in the next turn, oh, Michelangelo. Okay, so all, literally all I can do is move. All I do is win. No, that's not That's not the right thing. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move here. So I can climb, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. So one, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three. And then another one, two. Then I can use my two to climb. I'm gonna climb there. I can't literally, I can't do anything. I can't attack him because I have nothing but move, which at least I'm on the train. So that, that worked out. Uh, I don't actually think I can, nope. I can't do anything. Skateboard. 
He is. It's fitting. It's fitting. Uh, one of the cool things that Mikey does actually is I actually get a bonus move, uh, and I can cross any terrain. So no terrain affects me. I'm going to go ahead and move. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's free though. So yes, I can move right there. And that way I keep this little dude from coming up. So next up, <gasps> Leonardo. Leonardo. Oh yeah, son. All right, so I have I one. only one move, unfortunately, and oh. you're not sharing any. I am sharing. Anyway. Well, yeah, but not to, oh wait, I'm Leonardo. Yeah. I'm looking at the wrong dice, excuse I me. I gave you two. Whole I have a bunch there. of move then, Never mind. Uh, so his movement is three, so we will go one, two, three with the first one, and then one, two, and let's see, you have two, so I should be able to then move up here, mm -hmm. right? So let's do that and try to oh, cut up some ninja. Mm -hmm. And you have, geez, all right, so each one of those, and you'll notice on certain things, and I'll put that here, uh, we can focus on there. So you'll see some have double. Those actually mean you get double the amount there. So in that case, he has two of these, which gives him four, and then whatever else he wants to throw into it. So that's actually a pretty sweet attack. Yeah, so let's go ahead and swing. He has a base attack of three. Uh, and let's see, we will hold on to one of these so that we can do this later if I need nice. to. Look at you. So we get to add three more to this, roll six dice. That is strategic right there. Wow. That's four, which he's a gunner guy. Where are those? Uh, gunner guy's right there. So they have two defense. Two defense, one defense health. one, so that should be enough to take him down right he there. He gones! What's his name? You get to name him. George. George! Harry and George! George! Second blood, Leonardo. These are also the most, like, Seinfeld named <laughs> thugs ever. It is New York. <laughs> if there's a Kramer, it's gonna be amazing. All right, so, next up, we're gonna pull, oh, is that your whole move? I think that's go. it. Okay, next up, we're gonna pull Thug Gunner. So the thing about Thug Gunners to uh, remember is that they attack as a group. So it's better for them to actually get as many in kind of the same location, because if they all have line of sight, which is a straight line, uh, or in this case, if they're on top of a train and they can see down, that is also a straight line, uh, they will all attack together, which is great, because their attack by themselves kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. they can move three. So let's move one, two, three. Uh, he's gonna move one, and that's really all he can do. Uh, and then we got one, and that's the one that just moved. I swore we had another one. Did we kill him already? I killed him. Oh, that's right. You killed Leonardo him. Leonardo killed him. Hey. Oh, that was George. Yep, Okay, George. I thought George was a brawler. All right. So uh, no one has line of sight because they are below a train. So, and you're on the other side of it, so they can't do anything. So next card and last card is burr, 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 Thug Brawler. Uh, so Thug Brawlers, actually, that's their benefit. They get two in the initiative deck, so they can go twice. Uh, so let's see. Uh, one, two. He can't move in the same spot, but he can't move. So one, nope, he can't move there either. Let's move him here. He can't climb because you're smack there. And this one, though, can move into that spot. Uh, so yeah, so that's them. All right, so that is the, initial, the first turn. Uh, so what you would do after this is you would go ahead, we would re-roll all our dice, because every round that changes. You would move this down two rounds. And essentially we need to go ahead and beat Alapex before the sixth round to win this. And then we would go ahead and shuffle this. Also, special ability cards that you're seeing below here, uh, those reset as well. So you can pick a different one each turn. Uh, and your stats uh, on your actual cards here, which actually, uh, do you mind grabbing uh, Raphael so we can show his sure. uh, main card off there? So Raphael's card, you can see, has a bunch of stats towards the top. Also, the ones at the bottom tell you exactly like what his symbols are. Uh, and then he has a special ability, which I don't remember what Raph's is. Uh, uh, it's enraged. It only comes into play when his life gets below five, I believe. And it basically punishes people for attacking him. Uh, and Raphael is like a beast. He can take up a bunch of defense and all that kinds of stuff. Uh, and you can also see his health, his movement, and his focus. So all of that is listed at the top of the card. And I really like the art style here. So then that is the deck, and then it is time to re-roll dice. So let's go ahead and re-roll that here. Okay. 
And so now that we're actually moving around, oh, and I rolled a chi symbol, so I can go ahead and take back my focus. And then I'm gonna take some attack. Where am I? Where's Donatello? Oh, he's over there. Okay, so I need to move, and I need some attack. Booyah. And, oh, nice. Oh, and that is one thing we hadn't really covered because we hadn't been attacked yet because we're boss like that. Mm. Uh, so if you look at... <laughs> if you look boss at the, like that. <laughs> if you look at the die here, uh, you'll see the shell. Uh, that is essentially if they would have been good enough to attack us, uh, we would have rolled that, or we can look at our symbols here and go ahead and deflect one. All right, so what we would normally do uh, is the deck is shuffled, and so we would just go ahead and pull that, and that would start the next round. And this one, of course, would be way more action-packed because people are actually in each other's spaces, things like that. But uh, that's actually just a really quick sampling, but effective, because that is essentially the game. Like, you add complexity. There's other uh, campaigns where they have cameras in them. You gotta avoid the cameras. There's Mausers, which have all kinds of other mechanics. But ultimately, it's being strategic about your dice, helping each other out, and trying to kind of build up each other's abilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's your impression on the overall game so far? Oh, I like it a lot. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing more of it because my understanding is you can play the, uh, you play them individually like this, or you can play them in sequence like you're playing through a mm -hmm. comic book, and you know, depending on who wins the previous scenario, scenario you might get a bonus or a detriment uh, going forward in the next one. So that sounds a lot of fun to me. Yeah, that's one of those that I feel like the comic book office needs to get a campaign going, hit, hit, nudge, nudge. Uh, so yeah, so with that, thank you so much for joining us on Comic Book Tabletop, and we will see you next time. Peace.